What is up, K gang? It's your girl, Kate. It's my favorite friend, Maya. And welcome back to another video. Full disclaimer, this is our experience. This is our journey. This is what we went through in this recovery house. It does not mean that you guys are gonna experience the same thing. We just wanted to let y'all know, because I know there's been a video, literally everybody in the comments, that's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for this recovery house video, so it's fucking here. We're basically gonna talk about everything that, that happened in the recovery house. We don't really wanna go through like our experience with the surgery and stuff. We have already done videos on that, so if you haven't watched those, please feel free to check my previous videos. We talk about everything that happened on there. Mm -hmm. um, but now this is just the recovery house review, so we're gonna get started right away. So we walked into the house and we were greeted by like a few girls who were already staying there. And another surgery girl who was there, she, I asked her straight up, I was like, listen, like, what's the vibe of this recovery house? Like, you know, I heard great things about online. Like, she's like, honestly, I've had a pretty good experience, but I'm gonna tell you what all the other girls been saying. And she sadly was there for like three months because she was having complications, but <laughs> with her. That's her name? Huh? That's the name you're giving her? Sally? I said sadly. Oh, sadly. I think you said <laughs> Sally was there for three no, months. No, sadly. Let's comment down below if y'all heard Sally too. But we can name her Sally. I'm drinking my wine, okay? <laughs> sadly. <laughs> she was there for three months, so yeah. she's seen it all. Yeah. She was basically saying that other girls who stood there, they had like some issues with Amy because they felt like you know, since she opened her second recovery house like what, a month before we got there or something like that, that she was very like all over the place. And the reason why people choose Amy's recovery house is to have, she has that personalized touch. They always say, oh, Amy goes where you here. She helps you there. She like, she's always there. Yeah. And she said that the one of the girls that said since she has a second recovery house that she's not as present. So I was like, okay, I, I can deal with that. I was like, well, whatever. We don't need and, to go to freaking Yeah, and she videos. was just like, oh, like, you know, they just had some issues with the nurses or whatever. She was basically saying like, it was a few issues. So I told her in front of Caitlin, I said, listen, well, I respect that you told me, but I'm a, you know, have my own experience. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm yeah. her. So that was that. So one of the girls already had like warned us about like the things that we could possibly be experiencing during our recoveries but like Maya said sh sh we wanted to see it for ourselves so whatever we get upstairs um and we walk into the room and after like a couple of minutes being there we're like whatever like let's just turn the tv on like let's just see what you know we could do we turn the tv on and there's like this huge like what would like a what would you call that like a just like a you know when like like somebody punched the tv right like there's this huge mark on the tv when you turn it on and you know like the tv be like static you're like different colors that's exactly what it was and i called the nurse right away and i'm like listen like we just got here like this is a tv this is what happened yada 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 and she's like oh my god like oh my god i'm so sorry she said i can't believe them other girls did that yeah why i was like damn why that? would they do that yeah so it was the original girl we talked to she said i went back and told her oh you know mm -hmm. that happened with the tv she said i don't think they did that because I'm, i went in them girls room every day and they never had the tv on she told me she even said they never went, watched tv because yes. the wi-fi never worked uh, that was already like a red flag you know you're blaming um the, the, client the client in front of another client. So it was like, hmm, you don't know that they did that. That could have happened anytime. So whatever. Basically, she felt bad because she hadn't reported it to Amy. And when we got there, the TV wasn't fixed. And it basically looked like she didn't do her job. She didn't care about anything else. Yeah, she was just she like, looked like she didn't check the room right. to Amy. Mm -hmm. So that was like the first thing that happened. But granted, they came that night. They fixed our TV. They got us our new TV. Um, so, you know, thank you for that. Not that we got to watch TV, which brings us to our next point was the Wi-Fi. We were never able to watch TV. I really, I don't even, we turned on the TV and we tried watching something, but it would stop like every two minutes. And who wants to watch something, you know, when it keeps pausing? Like Wi-Fi was like a huge deal to us out there because think about it, you're in a third world country. Like you want to speak to your friends, your family, or whoever you have waiting for you back home. And I mean, I, I didn't really have a problem with the Wi-Fi, I guess, because I had cell service out there, so. But I had a problem because I didn't, 
I have AT&T and AT&T don't work out there. You gotta pay for it. And I was not trying to pay for 14 days of, <laughs> I mean, of cell service. No, but how much were they charging you? Like, it was $10, $10 a, day. a day. So I was like, no, nah. I said, well, it's a high speed Wi-Fi. So what, what am I paying $10 for? And no, she will be on FaceTime, on WhatsApp, like no problem. Yeah. I'm over here like, hello? Hello? I couldn't talk to nobody. Yeah. I didn't talk to anybody. Um, you know, she was um, in school, so if she had like a test or if she had a class, yeah, she couldn't that, join. I had to put her hot, I don't even know. My hotspot, yeah, yeah. I had basically, because you know, like if you have a hotspot, you could share basically giving somebody else Wi Fi. That's what I had to do. But that was barely even working. Like it, it was. It barely, it barely worked. worked. Like how much cell service am I really getting out there that I could use my phone and give her Wi Fi at the yeah. same time? So we went the whole entire time with like shit Wi Fi until like the day before. Because this is the thing, like what you were saying, um, they had a, the Wi-Fi box, but it was on the second floor. And it was the in the massage room. room. Mm -hmm. And the massage room was always closed. Granted, people are getting massages, like you don't want to have that open. There was another um, Wi-Fi box or like router on our floor. But the whole time, you know, we think like it's on. We obviously, we didn't see the box blinking or whatever, but the day before we getting ready to leave, I'm like, there's no fucking way, like this Wi-Fi box. We were over well, it. Actually, it was the day we were getting, the day before we were leaving, but only because we changed our flights to leave earlier. The Wi-Fi box that was on our floor, it was connected by like a water, what is that, like a water distance? The water? You know the, like- It was in the, the same outlet, outlet as like a as water, the water cooler wa that was not plugged in. So exactly. every time we needed water, we had to call the nurse to bring us water. Okay, there was no water cooler. A water cooler that didn't work. Right. I bring the box inside the room and little do you fucking know, like connect it to the outlet and boom, we have amazing Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. Like, almost like great Wi-Fi. It would go off like every couple hours, but it was okay. It did the job, literally. Like we, no, it did the job. we did not have yeah. a problem. So if y'all staying at Amy's house, y'all better bring that fucking Wi-Fi box in your room on the third floor. Bring that shit yeah. in there. Because you're gonna think you have Wi-Fi or it's connected in the whole No, thing. okay, since we're on the Wi-Fi topic, mm -hmm. towards the end of the day, I told Amy, when I was telling her all my 80 concerns, I said, Amy, this Wi-Fi does not work. Like this shit, I have, I, I have WhatsApp messages. This shit do not work. Before I wrote her, listen, what was wrong? Okay. A few days before that, I said, Amy, this Wi-Fi don't work. Like something mm -hmm. has to be done. I'm over this shit. Like she on the phone all night. And I'm talking to myself because the <laughs> Wi-Fi don't work. I couldn't even get on Instagram. Yeah, it was like, pretty bad. And she said, okay, I'm gonna call the Wi-Fi service provider or whatever. They're gonna, they said they're sending somebody tomorrow. 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 I keep on saying tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Yeah, maybe I'm like, girl, it's been three days. Where's the Wi-Fi? Oh, they don't work on the holiday. Oh, oh, they rescheduled. Oh, I'm like, so no Wi-Fi. There was no Wi-Fi. No quality Wi-Fi. And you couldn't do anything. You couldn't be on the phone, on the laptop. You couldn't watch TV. Nothing. You couldn't do couldn't anything. Do anything. You, we couldn't watch, no, that's why we didn't watch no TV. Yeah. That was really it with the Wi-Fi. And we get it, like, it's a third world country. We're, now looking back at it, we are making this so you guys don't set your expectations super high. Super high, yeah. Just kind of go with the flow. Of everything and else. expect the unexpected. Yeah, I'm gonna fast forward all the way to the beginning real quick because they never checked us for a COVID test coming in to the house. Sorry, we should have definitely started with that. But the big ordeal they made for someone to get on to get a COVID test, we stood on the line three plus hours for you not to even check our COVID test. This was back when Columbia didn't require, but the recovery houses were requiring. Right, so that was real quick. I wanted to go back. Yeah, I forgot about that. Let's talk about how we didn't get any post-op walks or any exercise unless <laughs> it was you taking me and me taking you. <laughs> yeah, nah. When you book with Amy, you know, she sends you this, what they offer, what they provide, what they do. And one of the things that they provided were post-op walks. I never had a nurse come to the table, come to my room, or come to me at all saying, hey, it's time for your post-op walk. <laughs> or hey, let's walk away. Which sounds time. ridiculous, but when you say it's included. No, but it doesn't sound ridiculous because You're me, supposed to get up every like 30 minutes or You really shit. are. You, yeah. and, we, and we did not do that because we were in so much pain, which we'll get to that why. But yeah, no post-op walks were given at all. Mm -hmm. um, we would shower by ourselves. Nursing. Yeah. I was under the impression I would get quality nurse service and immediate care. 
you know, because that's why you book a recovery house. You can stay at Airbnb, but why you don't? Because you'll need to hire a private nurse, or you won't have no nurse, and you need a nurse. Right. So I'm like, all right, we're gonna get 24 hour nurse. Sounds great. Until I would take a shower, be in the shower, wanting to kill myself because the pain from being out of Faha was like beyond anything I've ever imagined. And I would, while I was in the shower, I would scream out to her and say, press the button yeah. because I'm about to get out in two minutes and I need a nurse before I like straight up just kill myself from this pain. I would come out the shower, I would sit on the toilet because I'm leaking fluid. So I didn't want to be like walking all over the room and I'm just leaking, leaking. So I would sit on the toilet. I would be holding my stomach because you just, you, you know when you go through it, if you don't have compression, it just feels like you want to die. Yeah, yeah. So I would be holding my stomach and I would just be sitting there and I'm like, oh my God, did you ring it? Did you ring it? She's like, I already rang it. I ran it 10 minutes ago. And I'm I just rang like, it over and over and over. I will start crying and I'm like, why God, why me? Then it was at some point that you had to start screaming out the door like, yo, nurse, yo, so I need so. a nurse. Like, help. Like, are you the man? Somebody. And we're laughing now and all of that. But honestly, when you're in excruciating pain and you've been waiting for a nurse for over 15 for minutes. For over 10 minutes is just ridiculous to me. Even waiting okay? over five minutes, like you said, out your faha. Once you guys go through the surgery. No, but what if one of us was passed out? Over 10 minutes is just like oh, ridiculous to me. Okay. Well, bitch, if I'm passed out for 10 minutes, I'm doing <laughs> what the fuck. Exactly. But I'm gonna get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Ten minutes is just crazy to me. And then I started to realize it's a little fast forward, but I started to realize at the end of the stay, you know, it wasn't a hundred percent the nurse full. I'm gonna give it fifty percent. The other fifty percent is on the recovery house owner. Oh, no. Why now you only have one nurse for over five patients? In a yeah. shift, there's no, it's, and it's three. How many flights of stairs was that? No, one. Mm -hmm. So three, three flights of stairs. Sorry, three, three flights, flights of stairs. stairs. So if she's doing something all the way down in the kitchen or something, and she has to walk three flights of stairs, you know, it's like it's not really that much fair to her. And she has a few people clicking at the same time. What can she do? And she's <laughs> and not to be funny, but honestly, um. The nurse at the time was out of shape, so she was always out of breath. Like Shit, she, I was out of breath. Anybody would have been out of breath. Would have been out of, because out even of breath. the night nurse was out of breath. Lorena, no. She she'll be she'll be <laughs> like, mommy, what you need? Yeah, but she'll be like, okay, what you need? Like yeah, like she'll be out of breath. Y'all, if y'all go to eat me, y'all better request Lorena, Lorena. Si tú estás viendo esto, te quiero, mommy. Lorena, if you're watching this, we love you. Oh my God. Oh. Um, a few days of being there like I started complaining on my surgery page I'm like yo this shit is like crazy this one nurse shit and one of the girls who stood there she was like what are you talking about I'm like yo they only got one nurse and she's like she's like no before COVID when she was there they had two nurses a shift yeah. I'm like oh makes sense why you had a mar marvelous, marvelous time Mm -hmm. Two nurses, I would have been living in luxury. Yeah, you have one nurse for eight girls. Like like she said, we're not going to put the too much fully it's on too her. Much. But I do want to speak on that nurse a little bit. Because 50% was her fault, 50% was not her fault. Um, This specific nurse, I'm not going to mention her name. But this particular um day nurse, because she was always our day nurse, she would lie a lot. She would have a problem with lying about almost the most littlest shit. Ever. And I think we caught her in her line maybe like three times. Mad time. Like mad time. I'm only gonna like, three I'm times. only gonna say three because I can only remember of like really three times. But um one of the times was obviously we had rang the the bell or whatever the shit that you press to call them. And she had came. I was on the recliner, which I can see from the door, and she was on the bed. And I don't know who who needed the nurse, but one of us needed the nurse. And she came in, first of all, I waited 10 minutes. So then I screamed her name. She came in, but she got a phone call right before she entered the room and she walked, like she turned around. And I'm like, oh, okay. I remember that. Yeah, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, you know, maybe she got a phone call. I thought maybe it was Emi on the phone. Exactly. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt. I wait five minutes, I wait ten minutes. I'm waiting and waiting, and I'm like, yo, she still hasn't come. She cannot be on the phone for this long. I at this point, I don't even buzz her anymore. I yell her name again. I'm like, yo! I didn't say yo, I just said her name, but I don't want to see her name. Yo! So she comes back up, and I'm like, what happened? Like, why you didn't come? And she's like, oh, mommy, like, I didn't hear you. And, and you didn't ring me. And, you didn't ring me. And I'm like, but so-and-so 
you came to the door and you answered a phone call and you walked away. You should have seen her face. It was priceless. She was like, it was priceless. <laughs> Literally, she was like, <laughs> oh, mommy, mommy, yeah. I got a phone call. Okay, I know that. Why did you lie to me? Why'd you lie? I thought the most stupid to say, oh, I'm so sorry. I got a phone call. I had to run downstairs. I'm sorry. That's it. And, if you, like, and if you forgot. Okay, fine. No, that's okay. I got a phone call. I'm so sorry. I forgot. I would have been like, you know what? It's okay. Like, this is what I would have proceeded. This is what I need. Such and such and such. Why lie? And my thing is, I got upset because I'm under your care. My life depends on you right now. She also lied about, which is going to bring us into our next topic. When you have first... When we had first got into the recovery house, we had walked into the room and she was like, yo, why is the air so dense? Like, I can't breathe. Yeah, the air in Colombia is just bad quality air. I yeah. guess it's from all the motorcycles and stuff. You can't breathe outside. Yeah. So, but she didn't, but we didn't feel that way when we first stepped into the recovery yeah. house. She kept stepping in our room and then going like into like this little lounge area we had right outside our room where there was like a couch and a fan or whatever we didn't want to be in. And she was like, yo, something's wrong. Something is fucking wrong because yeah. there's no reason I'm getting a stuffy nose. It has to be from this AC. And nobody else in the, in the recovery house had a stuffy nose. Right. Nobody else in the recovery house had a stuffy nose. It was only, only in the us. morning. Only in the morning because by like by the time I would go outside and come back, I wouldn't have a stuffy nose no more. By the time we would leave the freaking room, we would like have our sinuses would clear. Clear up, yeah. And you know, at this point, it's been like three days that we're still waking up with a stuffy nose, but we're not sick and we're like, okay, what the hell's going on? So I finally asked the nurse, like, yo, how often do they clean the air conditioner? She's like, eh. Every day when you guys are out for your massages. Every day. She said the cleaning lady does The it. cleaning lady. Mind you, the cleaning lady is shorter than me. I'm 5'5", five five, so let's keep that in mind. She's about like 5 feet or 4'9". Do I really think that she's going to get... 5 feet or 4'9"? 4'9". That was a major jump. Yeah. <laughs> it was only one inches left. Because 4'9 is like a, like a little person. <laughs> oh, like shit. I forgot that after 9 comes 11, 10, 11, 12. Okay, whatever, yeah, she was way shorter than me anyways. <laughs> and I know, like, I, she was not gonna get up on the recliner to get up and pull the Yeah, exactly. Like, but if y'all see what I had to do to get up on that recliner, to get to the AC, first of all, she's not doing that. She's not doing that. So when- Wait, how many rooms? One, two, three, four, five, five, like, like five, five or rooms. six rooms. Some of them are triples. Right. Never mind. So, I'm like, you know, she tells me that and instantly I'm like, in my head, I'm like, that's bullshit. Like, ain't no way this little ass lady is gonna get up and climb on this shit. But I don't wanna think, I don't wanna say, you know, she's lying. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. The next day, I wake up sick. When I say sick, I mean like sick as fuck. Matter of fact, I think we fast forwarded, but whatever, I'll finish this. I woke up sick. I'm talking about throwing up. I had a fever. Well, I didn't catch a fever until the nighttime, but I felt really hot. We checked the AC, fast forward a little bit, and I'm gonna put the pictures in. Y'all can see the shit is not clean. The shit is dirty. Was so dirty. I like could have had it been clean in months. I could have probably made a little dust bunny off of this shit. <laughs> Bro, and I was so mad when I saw that because it was like 3 in the morning and I was so sick I couldn't breathe. We were up. So this is what I'm currently going through because I have a fucking fever. Um, I've been telling them that I've been feeling like this for the last two nights. I know my body. I know when I have fever and I know when I don't feel good. Um, the way that they do things in Colombia it's so stupid with the temperature they take it underneath your armpits because i disinfected one of the thermometers and i put the thermometer under your tongue which is what the fuck you're supposed to do to take the temperature what was the result the result was i had fever which the nurse told me herself you have fever so now they brought a cold bucket or a cold bowl of water so that i can the, you know, I can cool the fuck down. Um, and she's cleaning the the filter. I think I even have like footage from that time. And you like, couldn't turn the AC off because the I swear five seconds after the AC was off, 
you couldn't breathe because it was so hot. And so we had no choice but to fucking but to put keep the it AC on. on and put the covers over our fucking head. head. Yep. So whatever, that was the problem. You know, she lied to us about the AC. We ended up finding out that the AC had been so dirty. And little do you know, the next day when we went to our massages, what do we walk into? People cleaning the motherfucking air conditioners. Reverse, rewind. What? <laughs> that same night at three in the morning that we saw that AC was dirty, we called the night nurse in. Right? It wasn't Lorena, it was a different girl. It was Karen. And I said, girl Karen. <laughs> Why is it? I, I made her translate for me. I'm yeah. like, yo, like, eat me not clean this AC. The same and not clean the AC. Somebody lying. And she was like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Yeah, we showed so her how dirty it was. So I went and told Amy, yo, sis, like these AC, I was, I just was going in that night. I was telling her, your Wi-Fi is bullshit, your AC is dirty, like this isn't that. Mm -hmm. So I guess she must have called Karen and told Karen to clean the AC. And I, got, we got so mad because I'm like, this is not a nurse's job to clean the AC. Yeah, I was. Your cleaning mad. lady should be cleaning the AC. I was so mad, and I kept telling Karen that. So night who cleaned it? You or Karen? Was, no, it, so and we watched her clean it. We watched her. I got a video of her cleaning it. Yo, I felt so bad because, and I kept telling Karen, I said, I don't want you to clean this. You are a nurse. <laughs> you are in charge of taking care of me, my surgery sister, and everybody else who's in this recovery house. You're not getting paid to clean, like. And we were so pissed, like, and but she was, was so mad. mad. Was I was so mad that she made her do that shit. Oh, like, but yeah, that was with the AC. Honestly, like, check the freaking ACs and make sure they're cleaning them shits because you definitely can't get sick from that. But you had to. I think it was day two. She had surgery the next day, yeah. and all of a sudden it just was like pop, 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 which we inserted in a, another video. Yeah, and. She thought it was gunshots. I'm I like, girl, that's fireworks. Like, it's a celebration outside. Oh my god, but if y'all heard the way them shit sounded, like. So I had posted it at the time, posted on my surgery page, like, yo, I can't sleep with this noise. And a girl who had just stood there maybe a week or two before said, girl, that's why I left early. And I said, what? She said, yeah, I left early because I couldn't deal with that noise. Yeah. So man, she got surgery the next day. Your nerves is up. You're like scared at. And you can't sleep the whole night. It was the whole night. And it's not even, it wasn't even fireworks. They were playing music. Music on top of that. It and was a celebration. During the day, there was construction. So we exactly. could not rest. Like, there was constructions on both sides of the house. The side next door to the right and the side next door to the left were getting construction. Which I understand you can't control, but. But at least let you're like, can I get a, you knew it was a celebration in Columbia the whole month of December. Give a warning, hey, there might be some noise, especially since yes. somebody already complained and left. Yeah. Give a, give a, a common courtesy. Construction all day, music all night, and fireworks. Literally, there was, it was no silence at all. Mm -hmm. At all. Columbia is like Christmas around the it time. It was Christmas, but they do the whole month of December. A whole month. So. From like December. So never go in December. Yeah. That's just advice number one. Um, okay, we also want to talk about how Amy really never popped in to check in on us. She doesn't pop in, well, I don't know if she did it before COVID. I don't know, if because she had two different houses. She was all over the place. Um, but she never popped in on us to check in how we were. She really barely ever texted us. Because even if she texted us like, hey, are you girls okay? That would have been okay with me like i get it you're a recovery house owner to two recovery houses you know you're dealing with this patient here that patient here you got eight patients in one house you probably got a full house in the other i get it but the least you can do is you have your daughter working with you have your daughters checking on your patients or have your daughters checking on one house while you checking on the other and like her daughter's in school how about you hire an assistant you're making a lot of money yeah how yeah. about you get an official assistant mm-hmm so can handle your two recovery houses because we didn't meet Amy until the night the night we got there and she came to collect her money her money and then she was gone and then she was gone with the fucking wind and we didn't okay. see her again until no the only time we seen her is when sometimes she would do transportation well yeah we but, saw the next day after that but but that's because she had to day. take us because her drivers weren't available they were taking other people so yeah, what are you gonna do we only saw her in transportation and, and we probably only had her in transportation maybe twice and then we didn't see her again after that until, and we didn't even see her when we left because I never she seen her again after that. told her daughter to come and, I guess, refund us. But later. the problem with that's another, um, another topic associated with that mm -hmm. is every time we had a driver or Amy outside, it's time to go to appointments. We were literally being pushed out the door, like physically, like pushed. <laughs> like if I take like her right dragged. now. 
like that's how they were doing us because they would be like oh you have a massage in half an hour so we would have to get up from the bed which is already taking us 10 minutes because we're in pain we'd have to wash our vagina real quick or do whatever we can no do. i didn't even take a shower in the no, morning not even showering but just like like like, like hat wash wet a paper tissue wet your vagina because you know what i'm saying um and then I'm like you're in pain like you said you're out your file we're in diapers we're like already bloating up we're we're in super pain we yeah, gotta suck our food down oh! i knew it i knew it <sighs> i knew it i knew it once my toe hit it thank god it wasn't a full cup just get a napkin talk about that that's what i forgot over drugging us oh yeah they were giving us we we you you was getting acid reflux every every night mm -hmm. and and like she couldn't sleep because she was getting acid reflux and I'm looking at her like girl you're bugging but what was bothering me during the night is that we kept being woken up like and I would think it's like oh three hours every three hours no I would think at the time it would be like twenty minutes we're getting woken up like seven times a night yeah. and we finally complained like something is wrong he told the nurse like yo. Something's wrong, like something. We said something's wrong first, but right. then that's it. They said, "Oh no, it's just." She kept telling she us. She said, like, "That's the time the doctor told you." What the hell? You I was sick, so I went and I told my my masseuse lady. I was. She's like, "Yo, I don't know why is it that it's only you and your surgery sister that are going through this. Like, why is it that y'all are the only ones that are going through this?" And I told her, "This is what's going on. I'm not getting any medicine throughout the day, even though I know the paper says please give the patient." this medicine three to four times a day or such as three times a day. Three times a day, whatever. And I'm like, I'm getting woken up at 10, 11, 1, 3, 4 for my medicine. And she's like, why are they giving it to you during the night? And I said, oh my God, I told them the same thing. I said, I think y'all are giving me the medicine wrong. No, I'm giving it to you what the doctor told me. Da, da, da. So I told her and she's like, you need to tell them. I said, no, I'm not going to tell them anymore. You need to contact the recovery house because they're not listening to me or my surgery sister. Everything English, we're saying, Spanish. Yeah. French. Everything I'm telling nothing. them, they're disregarding. I'm speaking Spanish, they're acting like they don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I'm speaking another Spanish to them. So whatever, I guess the doctor or his staff, they contact the recovery house. And we get back to the recovery house and boom, we have a dosage of medicine waiting for us. And like, I was watching your live earlier, like you said, yeah, there was no acknowledgement. There was no, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I was wrong. Da -da -da. There was like, well, the doctor so I did what the doctor no the doctor said three to four times a day you're doing it at night so I'm going through pain all day and I'm barely sleeping at night because you're waking me up every hour I really didn't want to leave that out they were over yeah, drugged no. over and it was really being over drugged like no because and then one of the medication they were giving us too many times too a day. many like it was past what the was, doctor said and no I think it was the drops or something it was oh no they, then they wasn't giving us the drops it, it was I don't, it was a whole scandal Listen. no wait she didn't want to show you the clip oh she didn't want to show me the clipboard yeah she didn't want to show me the clipboard until one day i was just like where's where's my medicine medicine she, she's like oh it's downstairs so well i need to see it i need to see it and i'm telling i'm going through it i'm like look three times a day two times a day this after meal this before me i said why are you giving us what's at night Whatever, then we went to the doctor, the doctor spoke to him, then that's what it was. Because we were getting pain medicine at night when we were sleeping, when that's what we'd be dying during the day because there was no pain relief during the day. Right. So, at all, at all. Oh, that's what I wanted to say, real quick. Because this is what people were telling us. You're in a recovery house, if you can manage your own medicine, if you can set a timer. No, I would say take a picture of the fucking clipboard and keep in check okay what time is it giving it right and if you notice like hey i'm not supposed to take this medicine at this time don't be afraid to speak up and i get it it's hard because if you don't speak spanish it's hard so you gotta go to a translator she, she ask. speaks perfect english i spoke perfect okay well that's that like, nurse the yeah. day nurse yes like the day nurse at emi's like she spoke english so if you can speak to her without a translator i like you know she will definitely understand you but the advice i would give is just take your own medicine if you have a paper that says you're supposed to be taking X, Y, and Z at this time and how many times a day. You can take medicine. You're grown. You can do that. You know what I'm saying? I would. I personally wouldn't trust another nurse with my medicine because of what I went through the first time. I would just take my own medicine. Okay, moving on to showering. Like, who wants to shower without water? <laughs> Let me stop. Nah, for real, okay, we're in a third world country, yes, I get it, I'm nah, not gonna expect anything, <laughs> but when I'm showering, my shit would come off, but it happened to you 
before it happened to me. Like, I would look at her like, girl, what are you talking about? Like, I still hear your shower. It was like drip, drip, <laughs> drip, literally. And then it was one time where your shower just shut off completely. <laughs> they don't want to turn off. And uh, that would happen if like more than one girl was showering in the house. So if Fulana was showering on the second floor and I was showering on the third floor, one of us That's was coming for water. Yes, it's not the recovery house fault, but... Hey, let's uh, say, okay, someone shows about a shower. Yeah. Do you mind waiting 10 minutes? Right. And, you know what? It's all about communication. That's mm -hmm. our point. Yes. Be communicative. Yeah. Or just be honest. Like, or don't, don't let us, like, going through that while you're in pain, you're trying to shower, like she said, being without your faha is... Horrible. So Horrible. You're, you're so in, don't put me in a situation where I'm not without my faha and there's no water. Yeah, like and I can't get back in a dirty faha if I'm not showered. Like this shit is just backwards. Oh, and the fucking water would flood on the bottom too. Remember we? Oh yeah, that was nice. I forgot about that, but thank God we took videos and pictures of everything. We would be showering. Granted, it was only our feet because if the shit came came up to where our incisions were, we'd probably be infected by now. But. <laughs> But we would shower and we would be standing in our puddle of fluid, blood, <laughs> pee, whatever we were doing in the shower. So my shower had to be under two minutes because yeah. if not, it was going to go over the barrier I, of the shower, yes. you know? And I don't know if it was like plumbing situation, if the shower was clogged or yeah. whatever it okay, was. One thing, one thing I want to go back on. The clean, this mysterious cleaning lady, right? <laughs> no, we saw her. We she saw her, swore yeah. she cleaned. Like, I would see her cleaning, but like, I wouldn't be in the room the whole time. One day, I came, no, it was like two I know or three exactly days. What you're about to say. It was two or three days, and I kept going, yo, it fucking stinks in yo. here. It stinks, and I'm going like, smelling myself. Yo, she was smelling me like, bitch, is it you? I'm telling her, because I know my underarm be serious sometimes, but I'm like, nah, that's not an underarm smell. It's like a dead body in this bitch. Yeah. Like, it was a dead body. After like the second or third day, I think you found it. You found it, I think, when you what? was at the toilet. The diaper, the oh. pail of garbage with the diapers in it. Wait, I walked in and I'm like, it just what dunk like a okay. dead body, bro. Like I'm, a dead mouse. I'm. I think it was in the morning too. I'm ready to go take off my faha to put my diaper on to throw. Yeah, cause we we took off our own diapers and everything. So. And I opened the trash can and that shit was full up to here of diaper, bloody diapers and bloody pads. It was like two or three days worth of diapers in that. And I room. was just. I like, said, well, what is the cleaning lady cleaning? And so you know what I did? I fucking took the trash can out the bathroom and I put it outside of the room because I'm like, Oh my God, that was the worst smell. One yeah. of the other girls in Emi's second recovery house, she was, um, it was just like this really bad smell. Aside from like the trash can, it was this really bad smell every time we would shower. And I'm like, I mean, we would be like, I mean, I know I'm showering and I know I'm like, um, I would that was me that smelled like that, so I wouldn't say anything. I'm like, damn, do I fucking stink or something? <laughs> nah, but I thought it was me too until one day, you know, you was just like, I, I think I had finished getting my massage with Jonathan and you were showering and you was like, yo, bitch, it stinks. <laughs> and I walked in and I'm like, now, nah, what the fuck is that? that? Smell, yeah. And we didn't, we obviously couldn't figure out what the smell was. We obviously thought it was one of us or a mixture of both of us, of our fluids. Until we get picked up the last, the last day, we're yeah, going to yeah, the, the last day. airport, and um, no, and every time I would brush my teeth, I would be like, yeah, yeah that too. Like this shit stink. Mm -hmm. Like I, I thought it was me though, to be honest. So then we got picked up the last day we were getting ready to leave, and you know one of the other dolls at the recovery house. You know we're the talking, second one. We're talking about like our different experiences, or whatever, and she brings up the smell in the house, and we were just like, yo, the same shit happened. They can't have the same motherfucking tube anyway. <laughs> they can't have the same tube. Yeah, I think it's a sewer system in Colombia. Like, like the system water stinks. And that shit stinks. So it was a really bad smell. So that was also fucking with us the entire time. Uh, that was that was like a really minor issue. I would say like the safe locked on me with all my valuables in there. Inside of it. For like yeah. two days. And for like two days because Emi was so busy. And she didn't want to come and open it. So it took two days for her to come. And my thing is, bro, I had all my money in there. Like... <laughs> I need, well, I didn't have, okay, maybe, I didn't Not have all, all of, of my money in there. Yeah. I didn't have all of my money, but I had the money that I needed to be secured, secured in there. Obviously, they give you your which own Which wasn't technically which secured. Actually, oh my God, yes, I'm so glad you brought that up, because I was just going to say that. It was not secured, okay? If your safe locks on you in Columbia, bitch, press zero, 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 and that shit will open up. The whole thing with, oh, you having your own password and passcode. The good thing about it is if your 
safe locks and they try to open it is 0000, you have to redo your whole password. So if they don't know your password and your safe was open, then you obviously know, like, this shit ain't safe. So yeah. take your own safe out there because I had my safe with all my money inside my safe locked with my combination inside of that safe. So yeah, they could have took my 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 lock, safe, my yeah. safe, but they would have just to break it open. Obviously. So yeah, I waited just to wait. Just never leave your money unattended. Yeah. I don't care how good this recovery house is. I don't care how close you are with your surgery sister. Not surgery sister. Anybody who you share your roommate. roommate yeah. um, keep your money on you at all times or keep it secured at all times. I also had... Um, my suitcase that had a combination on it, so whatever the fuck, I kept my money or I kept whatever other valuables, like my laptop, my camera, I kept it in there whenever I wasn't in the room, so, you know, you, you can steal my luggage, like I'm gonna know my luggage is missing. Yeah, but. I mean, I was, like, lazy with it. I would have my laptop out. I would, one day, I by accident had my fanny pack, mm -hmm. I left it on the bed when I went to get a massage and clean it, just cleaned under it. But that's what they so have to thank God they didn't steal. Yeah, that's what they have to say. Like, we but didn't have that doesn't mean that's you know it's not a possibility. They like we didn't experience or I, or I didn't feel like like weary about leave, leaving my things around. That's not to say that I wasn't cautious, but I wasn't so worried. If yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think about like what else, but there's. I think that's basically it. Yeah, I think to we. Be honest. I think we covered a lot of you know whatever happened to us in the recovery house. I'm, if there's anything else like. You know, comment down below if you guys have any question, any other questions. We definitely have way more other videos for you guys. Um, but that's really it. We did our surgery review. We did our recovery house review. Anything else after this would just be, you know, y'all wanting to know anything else. No, like, we have a few more videos about. No, yeah, you definitely have like a, a few more videos on like you know how to choose your doctor, who you, how you know the right doctors for you. So definitely stay tuned if you guys want to know them things. Um, but one disclaimer like we said, just because we had a semi bad experience doesn't mean that every recovery house is gonna be the same way. Yeah. And if you're a first round doll, I really do think you should stay in a recovery house. In a recovery house. And a common question I always get is, if you had to do it again, would you have stood at your doctor's recovery house? And the answer is 100% yes. yes. I would have stood at Velasco's recovery house just because it was more convenient. And I feel like it would avoid a lot of these problems, especially with the transportation thing. Yeah. You don't want to be out of a Faja in a bumpy ass car. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just hard. It's just horrible. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you guys have any video ideas, you guys can drop those as well. But we've literally have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you want to know every single time I'm posting with my favorite friend, Maya, or just in general, make sure to hit the notifications bell. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining. And we'll see you in the next video.